It's probably not over the top to say that my next guest has gone through more than most of us could even imagine. In 2011, 24-year-old mining engineer Turia Pitt set out on an ultramarathon through the Kimberley. With no warning, she and five other runners were trapped by a bushfire. More than 65% of her body was severely burnt. I actually passed away three times on the operating table. I've had to learn how to walk again, how to talk again. Having beaten death, she spent the last five years pushing her body and mind to the limit. She's trekked the Great Wall, Inca Trail and Kokoda Track, cycled from Sydney to Uluru and last year became an Ironman twice. Please welcome Taria Pitt. <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. It's just incredible. You have done all of that in the last yeah. five years. Why? <laughs> Why don't you just chill out? Like, come on, relax. I think part of the reason why I was so determined to, to push myself so physically is that because of my accident, I'd always been a really big overachiever. And then to go from people expecting a lot from me and then to go to people having very little or no, no expectations of me at all, that was really infuriating. So it was almost like I had a big chip on my shoulder for the past five years. Really? So kind of an attitude problem, is that what a you're saying? A massive attitude problem, yeah. <laughs> um, you recently got back from Nepal, yes. where you had planned to climb to yeah. base camp yes. on, on Everest, but couldn't because you were sick. I, I couldn't even start the walk. So what <laughs> was that like for you not achieving something you set out to do? Yeah, I guess it, at first, I was really pissed off. At the same time, though, I was really, really sick. So, you know, when you're really sick, dying is almost preferable. Yeah. yeah. And now I kind of think it's almost unrealistic to expect that every single goal you're going to set, you're going to achieve and you're going to achieve it the very first time you set out to do it. So you realised you were human for the first time? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't mean I won't do it one day, but I just wasn't able to this time. You had over 200 operations to get to now. Yeah. But you still have ongoing regular operations. Yeah, so I probably have about four a year. So what, what, given that you're up and about and running marathons, yep. what are these surgeries for? So if you just give me a hand. So that's, that's how your hand is if everyone just... Can I ask the audience too? Absolutely. To Whatever you want. So if everyone can just hold out their hands... And can you see how there's a, a distance or a gap between all of your fingers? Yep. And now make a fist. So that's how this hand healed. Right. So I couldn't use any of my fingers. And then I had an operation which released it, which means I can hold a cup, hold a pen, tie my shoelaces. So it's things like that. I don't have to have the operation. No one's forcing me to. I'd be fine to walk around like this for the rest of my life. But I choose to because it, it is an improvement. Um, are you in pain now? No, I'm not in pain talking to you after an operation. Yeah, of course, Charlie. What? <laughs> I'm just flattered that you don't think talking to me is painful. <laughs> um, do you ever get angry about what happened? Not really, because it's, it's weird. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy now. Like, my partner and I are in a really good place. I get to do cool things like Kona. Um, because of what I've been through, I've, I've probably matured a lot faster than most people my age because I was a bit of a knob when I was... <laughs> I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Yeah. Um, so tell me about Michael. He um, was your boyfriend. He's now your fiancé. Yep. He's been with you throughout yep. all of this. He's here. He's here in the studio. Yeah. How important was he to your recovery? You know, I'm someone that's got a lot of self-belief and determination, but to, to have someone there with me every single day who believed in me, who supported me, who showed up, even if I was being a bitch, even if I was being difficult, he was there every single day. And I think just to have someone to walk that journey with me, um, I don't think words do it justice. And you're engaged now. Are you, are you sure he's the one, though? You don't want to, like, <laughs> you're sure you're ready to commit? <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah. Don't know. I How see do you now. Know? So now you're famous. Like you, you got options. That's, that's all I'm true. saying. That's true. <laughs> no, I, I actually really love Michael. Well, that's a pretty great start. Yeah. I mean, since we're engaged to be married and all. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's not just for the money. I'm getting that vibe. Um, I wanted to ask you about one thing, though. Of all the things that you've done since the accident with Kona and the cycling to Uluru yeah. and all of that, there is one thing that you did I read in your book. You walked on coals. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. They were hot coals, too. They had, it's not like they went out. Yeah, I don't think you just got a bag of briquettes from Bunnings and had a stroll on it. So tell yeah. us how you came to be walking on hot coals. So my, my dad's always been a huge fan of Tiny Robbins. I, I'm familiar with his you know, infomercials. You know, yeah, yes. you know that guy, the yeah. big teeth? Yeah. You can change your life, that, that guy. Yeah. I so, believed it when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could be the next Robbins. Maybe. So I went to one of his conferences and he announces that we're all going to be attempting to firewalk. There was two parts of me. One part was saying, Go, run, run away, Trev, fast, fast. We'll call that the Charlie Pickering voice, <laughs> yeah. And then the other part voice was like, no, just step up, just do it, just, like, you know, you, you got to do this kind of thing. So what would your doctors have said if they'd been there with you at that moment? They were disappointed when I told them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they said, we've had, a, we've treated a lot of people who've gone to Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... I won't ruin any more of the story because it is in your wonderful book, Unmasked. Uh, it is out now. Turia, it's been an absolute pleasure. Would you th please thank Turia Pitt? Thank you so much, Turia. Thank you.